journalist Barry Weiss has just dropped part two of the Twitter files, exposing the social media company's secret blacklists. Ready for this one? Stanford's Dr. J, who argued that COVID lockdowns would harm children, Twitter secretly placed him on a trends blacklist, which prevented his tweets from trending. Or consider the popular right-wing talk show host Dan Bongino, who at one point was slapped with a search blacklist. Twitter set the account of conservative activist Charlie Kirk to do not amplify, huh, and Twitter denied that it does such things. In 2018, Twitter's then head of legal policy and trust and head of products said, we do not shadow ban, they added, and we certainly don't shadow ban based on political viewpoints or ideology. Hmm. So they lied. And one senior Twitter employee said, think about visibility filtering as being a way for us to suppress what people see to different levels. It's a very powerful tool. More. Think about visibility filtering as being a way for us to suppress. Yes, we had that one. All right, let's bring in Fox Business reporter Kelly O'Grady, who's been following the story as it unfolds. So a secret blacklist that they lied about, Kelly. What is happening here? I know it's so interesting, uh, Jesse, and of course, leave it to Elon Musk to keep us all held hostage on a Thursday evening like he did for last Friday. Uh, but I think it's interesting. you got to remember that part uh, one was rife with controversy after it came out that the FBI's uh, former general counsel was vetting that. So the fact that this is now coming out and we're finding that shadow banning was actually a thing and that they called it, what, what was it? Um, the, the visibility, I have visibility filtering. Yeah, yeah it kind of sounds like, you know, uh, social distancing, like you come up with a name, <laughs> right. uh, you know, to make it all seem palatable. But yeah, I mean, this is ongoing right now. So they're tweeting it out in the exact same thread, like last week, tweet by tweet. So more are coming in. But I think we can expect to see a lot of topics and people that have been shadow banned or filtered, if you will. Bongino was just on primetime. And Charlie was just on a couple weeks ago. So Dan Bongino is enemy number one. They suppressed him. They shadow banned him. And then they lied about it. Dan, I guess, is just too powerful, uh, too annoying to the liberals at Twitter. I, I can't make sense of it. I'm sure Dan is going to have something to say about this on his weekend show at 9 o'clock on Saturdays. Oh, definitely. I'm sure I'm sure he'll have something to say on Twitter momentarily. I, I always love reading, uh, reading his tweets. But I think for me, what's really, uh, you know, interesting about this and concerning is that, OK, yeah, you know, you're we're, we're joking. Uh, Dan Bongino has been censored, but he has a uh, very prolific audience he on sure our does. network. What about the people, you know, like uh, friends and family, right, that tweet about certain ideas, about their concerns about the vaccine or about, um, you know, elections, different topics that are important to them, you know, maybe their tweets have been suppressed as well. And so I think that flies in the face of what Twitter was trying to do, what was intended to do as a platform to encourage, you know, public discourse. And not only that, they were suppressing posts from medical doctors who had mm -hmm. legitimate opinions about the threat that COVID did or didn't play towards children. And those legitimate concerns were suppressed. I mean, that is a huge, huge problem in this country that that was not allowed to be read. Kelly, thank you so much for following the story with us. We'll be back if anything else drops. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.